Okay, so last week I played this gig with the J Music Ensemble, which is this band that plays anime and J-pop and video game music at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. We're playing here as part of Sakura Matsuri, which is the annual Cherry Blossom Festival here in uh, Brooklyn. Now, the band is fronted by fellow Manhattan School of Music alumni Patrick Bartley, who is a pretty amazing jazz saxophone player. He plays with Wynton Marsalis, he's played with the Chainsmokers, he's played on Colbert. Uh, somebody new joining the band. Say hi to Patrick, everybody. But Japanese pop music is a really big passion for him. I mean, I guess like most of us um, in America, I came to Japanese music through video games. I would play Sonic the Hedgehog, I would play um, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, all those kind of games. So I would go to the library, find the music, um, and then I realized, oh, it's composed by this person who's Japanese. Oh, this music comes from Japan. How far does this go? So for me personally, playing this music, which I don't know a whole lot about, filtered through the lens of American jazz improvisation has been really interesting because it feels somehow both very different and very familiar. Take a look at the background, if you can find any bios on these um, musicians and composers that made music for these games and anime and J-pop, they were all influenced by American jazz music. I mean, you have people like uh, Yuji Ono, right, who was a composer for the music of Lupin the Third. And that was in the 70s. So that's very clear, clear inspiration from, from things like either James Brown's band or Herbie Hancock's band or even older, like you got Count Bass, you got Thad Jones, you can hear all that side of stuff. to like more contemporary people like uh, Yasutaka Nakata who did the music who's doing the music for Perfume and Kari Pamu Pamu, um, Utada Hikaru, Ringo Shina, all those J-pop artists are vastly influenced by jazz and funk and R&B music. And yet as familiar as it is from my perspective as a performer there's something very very different about it that's kind of hard to put my finger on. You should probably start with the rhythm first because the rhythm is one of those things that makes the backbone of this music sound so much different than American music. You talk, I think in the Scott Snaps video you talked about how language um, influences like the music that comes out of that culture and it's 100% true so if you want to study other types of music I think the same way you should at least peek at what the language is and the thing about Japanese is that it's a monothong language right it, every vowel is made up of one like small part of what our diphthong vowels are so if you got a it's a e right you also have consonant vowel consonant vowel usually what the language is made of you know takakuna kata means like it was not expensive you have uh shiranai i don't know like it's all like da, 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 and the, the music is a lot built up like that different than what we have because you have a lot of words that slur you have a lot of words that move this way you know when I talk like this it kind of swings a little bit so it's easy to make lyrics you know that kind of thing yeah but if you're speaking Japanese it's a little different but to speak it correctly you can't there's no accents there's pitch accents sometimes in order to make the you know just like in English where to ask a question you want to do upper reflection of course but that has no bearing on how the language actually sounds yeah yeah you would actually sound a little weird if you start speaking Japanese like English So I'm a huge fan of the idea that language influences music. The rhythmic qualities of a given language are going to be found in the musical ideas of a given language's culture. Different languages yield different musical grooves and ideas and feelings. What's exciting to see is Japanese music has borrowed from American culture, but now that American culture is borrowing it right back, creating something even newer and even more exciting. Do I really have the room for improvement if the both of us go when there's no ground beneath it? Does that mean I'm of no use and dead either? Is that how it's supposed to be wherever I arrive? And would it be the same if my heart was alive after the work? All I know is nothing ever compares to the days when my mother was there. It's 
all my fault. I wish the days that my mother was there. With jazz improvisation, the, the main way that we learn it, at least now, since the dawn of recorded music at least, we learn this music from transcribing. A lot of people say this for playing fighting games too, like does anybody play Smash, like Smash Brothers. They say go study some pro players if you want to get good, like study, like if you play Rob, go study this person. If you play Pikachu, go study this person, right? And then like you get your, you, until you practice their combos until you find your own style. There's, there is a feeling to it. Mm -hmm. I can't say what it is though. Well, you know, it's a constant work in progress for us too, but that's why we're constantly exploring these themes. And if I just think about the opening theme, you know. That one interval, the six, is so important to me because it's a feeling of, it's a feeling of the blues. And I think the Japanese have a very interesting way of dealing with the blues that I got very attracted to. Um, interesting. And I'm not right. and I'm not even talking about like what stereotypical pentatonic stuff. No, I'm talking about the straight up feeling of the stress and de-stress melodic tension. There's like a bubble gonna be poppy song by Perfume from the early era, the complete best era, as like all Perfume fans know of. Um, it's called Sweet Donuts. The chorus goes, Sweet Donuts. If I take it out the the context of the lyrics and take it out the context of the rhythm, I go. I'm like, oh, yeah. wow, that's some that's some other thing. It's a simultaneous feeling of the optimistic rhythm with the really melancholy melody, and that's what creates that feeling of J-pop that has, and it's very deep. Very yeah, deep. Because yeah. the blues is all about that uplifting feeling too, right? Right. So you got a lot of melodies in J-pop that go There's a certain like, I feel like going down to that seven and then coming back up to the E is like, all right, things gonna be all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know that feeling? Yeah. I mean, There's a whole bunch of ways to interpret that, but I feel that way when it comes to that. It's like, it's a sadness, but it's like, you know, we gonna be all right. This is my world that I live in. And I think a lot of people identify with J-pop because it makes them feel like they're going into a world that understands them. And they feel like they're going into a world where people are like, oh, this is a song that is talking about my life and my struggle because the music and the melody is about that struggle, but it's also about the optimism. Major can sound sad. There's not. I don't know. See, I was, other I was. I was hearing it almost as minor sounding happy. Like I was hearing most of the stuff exactly the opposite from what you were thinking. Which yeah. Is like okay. All right. I think. I think of both of those things though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, all of my Jewish friends, they said, "Wow, this." This sounds like I'm at temples. Sounds like I'm at, uh, I'm at services. Oh yeah. When they hear minor songs, for example, when we at our sessions, we play um, Kirby Dreamland from the arranger from Smash 64, Smash Melee. Bam, da, 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 <laughs> and they're like, man, why does it that's, sound like a horror? Yeah, I'm like, it's like, really? Like, yeah, and it does. All that to it, and like, it's it's because of the hat, the minor sounding happy vibe. Well, yeah, yeah. They're also sure. very, very influenced by Eastern European music. Yeah, yeah. okay, I can hear um, that. There's for sure. a popular Hatsune Miku song called Ivan Polka. That's like actually the song. Yeah. There's a lot of songs that borrow from that. Okay. And it's really interesting. It's just um, the synthesis of many, many other cultures, or at least like influence of other cultures, but then through this uniquely Japanese It's big island sense. culture. Yeah. It's okay. big island culture. Being half Jamaican, I totally feel where they're coming from. And there's a whole. And yeah, they're right, also yeah. vastly influenced by reggae music. Half of my family is from Jamaica.
interesting to see and in a small part be part of that synthesis between Japanese pop music and American jazz music. I'm very excited to see what Patrick and the rest of the J Music Ensemble do with this going forward because damn, the music is like, it's, it's really, really fun to play. So much fun. It's like an adrenaline rush to that last tune. Holy crap.